a time to be in his presence, to worship him both spirit and in truth, and to study another portion of his word. The great God above has just seen fit to make sure that his word always does what it's supposed to do, that the gospel is given, and that we, his children, simply obey. We want to thank you again for being here this morning. Um, I have a, a lesson that I want to go over. I, I just want to say some things first. First of all, um, I want to uh, give honor to uh, one of my uh, great friends in the Last Leaders organization, Brother Philip Hines and his wife, if they would just raise their hands. They're here. Oh. Um, they are here to um, worship with us this morning, and we, and we thank them for that. Um, excuse my voice as well. I think I'm battling a chest cold, and I don't know how I caught that in Las Vegas. <laughs> I'm telling you, if it's, if it's not something, it's something else. The devil is busy. I, I was at the dollar store, and uh, I bent down to tie my shoe. Lady come yelling at the, at the dollar store, and she was like, you know, yelling to the lady behind her or whatever. And I just looked up from tying my shoe because I was startled at, at the comment. And she said, what you looking at? <laughs> now, I know, I know everybody in here would have had, you know, some kind of different reaction and I'm, and I'm telling you, I ain't too different from you. But I understand the adversary. I understand who we we're fighting. And, you know, that, that early this morning, the devil is busy. And he, was, and he was just trying to catch me off guard. But as I was telling my class this morning, how am I able to, to, to come in here and teach you the word of God, tell you how you're supposed to live your life if I'm not doing it? So when I got in the car, my wife said, what you do? I said, I didn't do anything. And sometimes when people see that, that you're unwilling to respond, that you're unwilling to, to, to act out of emotion, they tend to take your kindness for what? And I am not weak. I'm telling you, I'm not even nice. Y'all think I'm nice. I'm not even nice. I, I had to come in this, in this uh, situation with Brother Gay to learn patience because I have zero. And um, it's, been a, it's been a work. It's been a, it's been a <laughs> struggle. But I promise you that I'm going to get through it with God's help. And I promise you that we'll all be the better for it. Um, title of my sermon this morning is Why... Are you here? Why are you here? We come into the worship house of God for many different reasons, but seldom is it the same unified reason that we're supposed to be here. We're supposed to be here to worship God in what spirit and in truth. And we do that worship how? Decently and in order. Oh, they're going to be scared now. <laughs> you are the church, but people are the problem. People are the problem. I want to, before I get started, want to acknowledge something. Y'all may not even know this, but I'm just a man. I'm just a man with a lot of responsibility. Not just for this congregation, but the responsibility of teaching you all 
righteous indignation that is going to be purposeful for your life. Y'all also know this about me, or may not if you knew here. Nathan feelings get hurt real easy. Somebody said true. <laughs> that's, that's why, because I come from corporate America. I come from corporate America where I had 300 employees. I just want you to, I know I'm diverting, but I want you to understand who I am. In the corporate world, you got to make decisions, and I understand I got to make decisions, and sometimes those decisions is not going to let you be liked. I told y'all, everybody think they want to be supervised until it's time to make some decisions. And then people get afraid and scared and all that. I am not afraid to make a decision. But I do understand that sometimes the decision is not going to be um, popular. Like, it may even be perceived as, as disrespect and things like that. And, and, and when, when, when people come to me and let me know how they feel, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to be like, well, you know, I had to do what I had to do. But what I want to let people know is I, I take it on. I take, it, I take all responsibility for whatever the fallout is. But when we are dealing with God's command, God's command, it's not Nathan's command. It's not, it's not Brother Gay's command. It's not, it's not the, the, the North Las Vegas command. It's God's command. I can't, I can't change that command. The thing has to be implemented, and I have no problem with that. But I'll receive the fallout. And I, and I stand again, because y'all know I'm, I'm a real person. I stand again before you. Then anyone that I have offended publicly, I tell you that I apologize for my offense. What I cannot apologize for is doing the work of God. Old preacher told me once, getting into this situation, he said, not always going to be liked. It is going to be hard to be friends with everybody when you have to tell them the truth. And then he said, there's one thing you have to remember as a preacher with your people. You may hurt their feelings, but save their soul. That's all I'm ever concerned with, because I love everybody in this room. I don't have a problem with anybody anywhere that I know of. Even the lady that, that yelled at me this morning at the dollar store. I don't have no problem with anybody. I don't, I don't want to have problems with anybody. And, and, and I'm telling you, not, not just because of my own personal, you know, that thing I got to be liked and all that, not even just because of that. I'm telling you, you all, my, my dynamic has changed. My life has changed. I can't deal with that kind of stress no more because I always take it on. But what I, I don't want you to have to take on these kind of stresses. When you understand what command is and the detriment if you don't follow it. Do you people understand what sin is? Do you understand what it means? God's directive is almost military. It's, it's military in its structure. Because a command must be followed. It must be followed. And if you don't have a righteous reason for not following it, then there's some consequence that come with it. In the military, if you don't follow military command, what happens? You get court-martialed. In God's economy, if you don't follow his command, what happens? You're going to have to come before the judgment. Same thing. In the military, once after the court martial, if you found guilty, you go to military prison. God got a prison for you too. Amen, somebody. I don't think people think it's real. I don't think because if, if people understood the detriment of not following God's command, I don't think they would do it as lightly are treated as lightly as they do. Because how many of y'all want to go to jail? I, I'm, I'm trying to scare in the room. Because I know some people ain't scared to go. They'll tell you, you know, I ain't scared of jail. Lock me up. You say you're going to say the same thing about hell? 
I don't see nobody that's saying they want to go. But your words and your actions must match. If your words and your actions don't match, you must be lying. Take that with you. I want you to take that through your rest of your life. If people say something and do something else, they are lying. You can say you don't want to go to hell. But how you live say something else. I want you to understand this perfectly clear. Hebrew, excuse me, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. We have a doctrinal guideline that we must follow. And the doctrinal guideline is contained in the Bible. That book that some of you all rarely pick up. So when you don't understand why you do what you do, your emotions get involved. And when you become emotional, you can't think straight. God don't deal in emotion. God deal in command. God would not have anybody be punished and go to hell. That's God's intent. You send you to hell. I don't want to hear people say, God gonna send me to hell. God don't want to send nobody nowhere. That's just the punishment. But who chooses the punishment? You do. The Bible says all scripture. In my version, says God breathed. All scripture, every last one of them, come from God. And it's profitable. That means it's useful. That means it's, it's, it's important to your life. It's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. Is, it that, is that in your book? Correction. For instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be complete and thoroughly equipped for every good work. That's what it's for. These are not none of my rules. They're not even your rules. God has put them in place for you to follow and you're supposed to because you said I want to go to heaven. Now watch this. How many of y'all want to go to heaven? See, then nobody want to go to hell. Everybody want to go to heaven. But what we got to do to get there? Follow God's word. That's it. This ain't calculus. It is a choice. But the wrong choice is detrimental to your life. Why is that? John chapter 8, verse 21. If you die in your sin where God is, you cannot go. And I keep telling people all the time, every day, and nobody listens. Ain't no big sin or little sin. If you're a fornicator and I'm alive, we're going to the same hell. If you forsake the assembly, and I do whatever, I, I, I drink or, or commit adultery, it's the same sin. Sin is sin. And sin is detrimental to your life. The battle starts in the mind. You have to change your mindset. You have to change the way you think. Why are you here? To learn how to change your mind. You already come in with a set of thought and thought pattern on how your life should be. You already came in with that. The truth of the gospel changes that. Amen. The truth of the gospel changes that. And when the truth of the gospel hits you, you know people get mad at you. I'm the messenger. Why are you mad at me? I got to follow the same rules you got to follow. The elders, the deacons, the preachers, we are not the rulers of the congregation. We serve the congregation. 
Because we all serve who? I, I'm telling you, I'm not teaching a calculus class. I'm trying to give you righteous theory. In your mind, your battle is against you. You trying to either fight the old man or find the new man. The new man you find through baptism. If you've already been baptized, you fighting the old man. And the old man don't want to go nowhere. Paul even said it. He said, I battle within myself. The old me and the new me. And the new me would want to do right. But the old me said, hey, I ain't ready to let go. And because of that, we're trying to figure out why we are here. The Bible lets us know clearly that we are here specifically with the mission of the church for evangelism, edification, and benevolence. Evangelism, edification, and benevolence. But the important part I want you to understand today because I've gone over these things before, and we're not going to stop going over them. Edification. The building up of one another. Why are you here? You are here to learn how to seek and save the lost. And the per first person you got to seek and save is you. If you lost, if you're in this world not doing what God has asked you to do, you are lost. Simple as that. Well, I'm a good person. Good for you. You know how many good people go into hell? A lot of them. Because God still gave the same thing. He said the same thing. If you love me, you will do what? Keep my commandment. He didn't say if you're a good person. You do everything almost right. You treat people almost right. Y'all know what I'm saying. Y'all, some of y'all got that saying, long as they don't get on my nerves. God didn't say that. You don't think you get on God's nerves. I know sometimes I just feel like God just pacing around heaven like, what did I do wrong? Because he's looking down here. God is a parent trying to give his children time to fix it. Trying. Just like when you, you, you remember when you were young? Y'all remember? You know, if you got dementia, let me know. If you remember when you were young and your mom and them gave you something to do and you didn't do it. And they didn't whoop you right off. They didn't, get, they didn't punish you right off. You know, they tried to give you time to fix it. But you thinking you done got away with it. See how that works? That's how people think right now with God. God giving time for you to fix it, and you thinking what? You got away with it. But then, it come a point when mom and daddy say, that's it. We got to deal with it. This little person ain't going to tell me what to do in my house. And that's what people are trying to do with God. Tell him what to do in his house. And you are his house. I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to worship my way. I'm going to come my way. I'm... That's like telling your mama and daddy, that's what I'm going to do, daddy. You ain't running nothing around here. Salvation can't exist without God. Christ's son dying on the cross, God's son Christ dying on the cross don't exist without God. None of this exists without God. Same thing when you were little. You don't pay no bills. You ain't responsible for nothing that you do. You don't buy your own clothes. You ain't got your own money. But you want to tell your mom and daddy what you going to do in their house? Yet you got the nerve and the gall to sit up here and show God what you're going to do in his house. 
Why are you here? What are you learning? It's his house. And when mom and daddy get tired of having to deal with you and your mess, what have to happen? Whooping! Don't be scared. Let me, let me come down and talk to you. Let me come. I want to get in your face. Whooping got to happen. Something got to happen. Because why? Is it because mom and daddy don't love you no more? No. Mom and daddy are trying to change and correct the behavior. Ain't nothing worse than unbehaved children. I'm talking to the children in the room. But y'all think I'm talking to little kids. Y'all children! <laughs> the change, the punishment is meant to change or correct the wrong behavior. Hopefully. I feel like my mama liked whooping me. <laughs> no, I, I was that defiant child. I like to talk back. I tell y'all, when I preach to y'all, I'm preaching to myself. I like to talk back. And when she said she was going to whip me, see, I had got big at a certain point. I was, I was 185 pounds. My mama was like 5'3", five, 5'4", five, 100, 130 pounds. And I'm, I, I'm, I, I had muscle at one time. I know y'all don't believe it. <laughs> at one time. So she came in there at that belt. I did just like this. I said, go on, get it. Get it. Don't hurt no more. But that's how we treat God. You get through one punishment and it wasn't that bad. Now you feel like, oh, it ain't that bad. Do your worst, God. You really want God to do his worst. It's a terrible thing to fall into the hands of a living God. It was a terrible thing to fall into the hands of my mother, Shirley. Because when, when, when she saw my behavior going off the rail, she had to come in and correct the behavior. And she didn't mind correcting the behavior. Amen. She whooped you till she got tired. <laughs> and talk to you. I'm doing this because I love you. God does it because he loves you. And then you, whoo, whoo, you still had a goal to go right back out and do the same thing because you did it on your parents. My mom and dad ain't going to do too much to me. They ain't going to kill me. God ain't going to kill you either. The soul can't die. But the soul can be punished. If you end up in hell, you understand it ain't no parole. Ain't no parole board. Ain't gonna be no talking to Jesus and the Holy Spirit later on. Amen. That's it. Amen. It's over. But the problem is, like my class told me today, and I'm glad they gave me this word, we project our earthly punishments on what God can do to us. And God is not your mom and daddy. God's discipline is permanent. Ever ending, everlasting. It will not stop. See, you take that whooping from mom and them because you know her arm gonna get tired sooner or later. Not God. And God ain't playing with you. You playing. God dead serious. Why are you here? People come into God's worship house for all kind of reasons. Brother Hines trying to see what me and you got on. Make sure our colors match. <laughs> trying to make sure the sisters don't wear nothing too tight, too short. <laughs> Y'all know I'm talking to the church police. <laughs> they want to uh, correct everybody, right? Make sure everybody hair comb. Make sure everybody got hair. Why are you here? I'm here to 
do ministry. What ministry? What ministry are you here to do? God's ministry is what you should be here to do, to seek and save the lost. But I, you got people that show up for the potluck. Amen. You better not serve no chicken. Church will be full. <laughs> you ain't here for the potluck. You're not here for no event. You're not, that's not why you are here. You have people talking about the church don't do enough. If we're teaching and preaching and saving the lost and seeking the lost and doing edification and doing benevolence and doing uh, evangelism, that is our mandate. That's what we are supposed to be doing. We are not here to entertain you. We're not here to give you little jobs. We're not, we're not here for that. Seeking and saving the lost. Luke 19 and 10. He didn't come to indict the saints. He came to bring people to, into salvation. Because without him, you can't have it. Without Christ, we're on our way down. Who are you playing with? God is the wrong being to play with. I asked my class a question. If the worship service depended on how you worship, what would we look like? It, but, but here's the thing. It actually do depend on you because you the church. But if it depended on how you attend, how you study, how you worship, when you show up, if you show up, how would we look? Would it be an acceptable worship service to God? I don't know, I don't know, amen. But it's a time to examine yourself. Why are you here? Some people show up out of routine. Some people show up because mom and dad and them, that's what we did. Some people show up out of obligation. Brother Neil, some people don't know why they're here. And how, again, I asked the class, they said, they're like, how you know that, brother? I asked them. What you doing here? <laughs> and they mean that seriously. Y'all know y'all adults, right? I sometimes wonder how people make it out of their bed to the bathroom in the morning. You don't know what you are doing or why you are doing it. Why? Are we here? Why are we here? Are we here to get something or give something? You're supposed to be here to give an acceptable worship to God. But I think most people are here to get something. They want to catch the Holy Ghost. The ghost ain't running. And you don't have to catch it. See, that's a worldly concept. They think they're here to find a blessing. <laughs> when you woke up this morning, what you thought that was? Amen. Blessing already found you. You still here. If nothing else, you, you might be broke. They might have to be come take your call on Monday. You might be having all kind of problems. But you are still here. You still here to make all those complaints. You still here to do all that fussing. You know who ain't fussing? Everybody in the graveyard. You still here. Did you come to get something or to give something? See, worship, worship chiefly, this is the definition, chiefly and eminently is an act of paying divine honor to God or reverence or homage, homage paid to God in a religious exercise or exhibition 
consisting in adoration, love, confession, prayer, thanksgiving, and the like. What is the like? Fellowshipping. I'm finna hit them real hard, Brother Neil. They ain't listening. Because it's a couple of y'all. Don't fellowship. It's a couple of y'all. And that's command. We brothers and sisters in Christ. When brothers and sisters in Christ come together for edification, how can they build up each other in edification without fellowship? We clickish. We clickish, church. Not just here, everywhere. I'm guilty of it. I'm guilty of it. I, I get mad just like y'all get mad. Y'all think y'all the only ones get mad. I get upset. Mistreat me? Because who, who, who enjoy being mistreated? Don't nobody like being mistreated. I get mad just like y'all, and I get clickish. Because I ain't going to talk to them today. I'm dealing with that within my own house. My daughter said something to me, so upset, and I haven't talked to that baby in two months. I'm telling y'all the truth. I told y'all I got to preach. Y'all got to preach to me. I'm telling y'all the truth. The Bible says, the scripture says, I should be the bigger person. But it was harsh. And every time I even go to pick up the phone, all I can remember is the harsh text message. It, 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 if she had just said it, maybe it would have left my mind. But I keep looking at it in my phone. I won't even erase it. Let, let me tell you something else you don't know about Nathan Elder. He petty. <laughs> it is an item I got to work on. But I, I told y'all, I, I need my ministry to be real. Because if it's not real, then you won't believe it. And I got to let you know I'm a real person. I got the same problems you got. And I know that she watches this, 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 this broadcast from time to time. And I'm, and, I'm, and I'm trying to be honest here. I love that baby. I love that baby. I love her with all her crazy mess. And I, if I want to be righteous in my conduct and have a worship acceptable to God, I have to do the right thing. Even if it means doing this, what's this thing? Swallowing my way. Woo! Pride gonna send a whole lot of y'all. You say, she said, y'all, me too. <laughs> to that, to that, that prison guard got ready for us. Pride is in my way. People are the problem. Pride is in a lot of y'all's way. Pride won't let you admit that you are wrong and you need to change. Well, look at the time when I remember by, I promise you, I ain't even got to the old sermon. Worship is an act of faith toward God. It is an external action motivated by an internal conviction. What does that even mean, brother? Elder? It means that it's outwardly shown by how we feel on the inside. And how we feel on the inside is determined by our mindset. If our mindset is not focused on God, then our outward appearance will look like it. Our worship will be a facade. It will be fake. It will not be true. Worship is what we give to God. Our worship must conform to God's pattern of truth to be approved. Your worship is not approved by the leadership. Your worship is not approved by your fellow brothers and sisters. Your worship is approved by God. And if your worship is not in line with what God has asked for, then you are out of line and it is not approved and it won't be accepted. What's the problem with that, Brother Elder? Sin! We're right back to the beginning. 
Sin. You are commanded to worship God. If you don't worship God, and you out there on whatever it is you out there on, you worshiping yourself, and you have made yourself a God. And God is what? A jealous God. He said, thou shalt what? Not have any God before me, including you. Emotions mess us up. I told you, anytime somebody start a conversation, I feel like I really stop listening. Look, there ain't nobody gonna tell me nothing no more. Because <laughs> I already know where it's going. You gonna tell me how you feel. It ain't gonna have nothing to do with what God said. And then you want me to deal with it. And then when I tell you what God said, you get mad. Why you say that to me? Because that's what the book say. That's what it says. You just don't want to hear it. The wrong choice can become detrimental. Let me, let me get to this. I got I to gotta get out of here. The second thing I want people to understand is that um, attendance. Attendance. To attend means to be present and to give consideration, to attend. You are commanded to be in the presence of God at the first day of the week. Acts 20, verse number seven. You commanded. Attendance is another, attention is another form of the word attendance. Both have to do with being present to learn and, and or participate, but both are needed. You have to attend and you have to show attention. You got people that come into the worship house to fall asleep. Say something. Amen. And I, I always find it amazing how people fall asleep on me. I understand that the content might be a little boring to you, but I'm loud as all outside. So at least I should have your attention. But for your worship to be acceptable, you must be in attendance and you must be paying attention. Otherwise, how else do you learn? You remember the cool kids in school? Remember what they was doing in the back of the class? They weren't paying attention. They was too busy being cool. You got that in God's worship house. You got a lot of cool people not paying attention. They on their phones. Amen. It's going to get real quiet. They on their phones and tablets. They talking to each other. Getting up in and out. You got people that get up on God's uh, 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 communion. Get up and walk out. What does it say on the front of this table? Do this in remembrance of me. Who is the me? It ain't me. Who you walking out on? You're not paying attention. Your body is in attendance, but your mind ain't nowhere here. Your mind on something else. It's football season. Look at the men finna get quiet. It's football season. And you're going to have some trying to get out of here because I know the game done started. And they like, Brother Elder done preached too long. I ask you this. Can the Raiders send you to heaven? Then why are you willing to give that more attention than God? You give attention 
everywhere it don't belong. God has required your divine attention. Required it. You give it to your job. You go, you work from eight to five. Job change you from nine to seven. You'll be mad. You're going to be upset. You'll come in here and tell job done change me around. What you're not going to do is not go. You're going to be on time mad. Paying attention. The worship time in this place haven't changed and got to be more than 30 years. Amen. Everybody know what time we got? What's the time we're supposed to be here? Look, y'all are saying a bunch of different times. <laughs> Who got a program? It's in your program! I told Brother Gay, I said, don't nobody read that thing. Y'all don't even know what time you're supposed to be here. Who ain't paying attention now? Your body's in attendance. Your mind is elsewhere. How can that be an acceptable worship? Our attendance and attention at the worship service is valuable, profitable to our faith, and our view of attendance and our attention while in attendance says something about our faith. That question right there that you, some of you people don't know what time y'all supposed to be here. If I ask y'all some scripture questions, we're going to be here all night. Amen. Church, we got to do better than this. Amen. Why are you here? If you're here to play with God, you might as well stay out there. I'm a real preacher. I'm a real person. I'm going to tell you. Most preachers ain't going to say that because they want you sitting in here. I want you here if your attention and your attendance is supposed to be where it is. But if it's not, you may as well stay out there. You may as well stay home. Because the worship has to be acceptable to God. And if it's not acceptable to God, you pray it. And God is not a God to be trifled with. The worship service does depend on us because we the church. Those who have never heard the gospel before depend on us as well to see God, to see him. They can't see him if we don't show him. How do we show him? By following what he says. We got to get our worship worked out. If you've never heard the gospel before, Jesus died, bled on the cross, buried, and rose again for you to have, have an opportunity for salvation. That's the gospel. That's what it is. And you cannot receive if you're not paying attention. And if you sit in the same sin you in while the invitation is being offered and walk out that door, you are not paying attention. I told you, the wrong choice is detrimental to your life. Amen. It's detrimental to your life. They don't know what I did. We ain't got to know. Nathan don't want to know. Some of y'all is living, woo-hoo. Somebody, you too, brother. Well, not woo-hoo, maybe woo -hoo. I know I don't went long. Last verse, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 through 25. Let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. That's why you are here. You're here to consider one another, love one another, edify one another, build up one another. That's why you are here. And then the Bible says, not forsaking the assembly of, your, un, of yourselves together as the manner of some, but exhorting one another in so much as you see the day approaching. And I'm going to say this, and I'm going to get out of here. I know I've said it a hundred times. Listen to me. 
That scripture ain't what most people think it is. The assembling of yourself. Why does the Hebrew writer even have to give the instructions? These people are running for their life. They're being killed, maimed, quartered, imprisoned, beat. You just tired. You sleepy. You a Raiders fan. That's crazy in itself. They running for their life. And the Hebrew writer still gives God instruction. I must tell you from God, I understand that you're running for your life, but you still have to assemble. Brother Elder, you just don't understand. I got jobs, I got kids, I got to pay for stuff. Yes, I do. I got the same stuff. But the command is the command. And it ain't going to change. It's the command. They had a better excuse than us. And the Hebrew writer still said, you got to come together. Why? Because you see the day approaching. If you don't see the day approaching, what day are we talking about? Judgment day. That's God's daddy's whooping day. Some of us going to get a whooping. But it's going to be a whooping we can't come back from. Command is serious. Don't let your projection of earthly punishment be, be misunderstood when it comes to God's idea of punishment. Don't leave out of this room in the same sinful state you came in. Why are you here? To change your mind. To change your mind to say, I want to serve God and not myself and not mammon, not the devil. I want to serve God. That's why I'm here. If not, then you're choosing to stay lost. You're choosing sin. I'm going to say it plain to you. I'm not going to predict sin. Don't die in your sin. Don't do it. God is serious. Why are you here? Think about it. Think about it as we stand to sing the song of invitation.